Two country churches, less than 10 kilometres apart. Both have a core congregation and an Anglican tradition, but only one is still part of the church. In 2018, the diocese announced plans to sell both churches to fund the redress scheme into historical sexual abuse. But each parish had a choice, if they had the cash. If they couldn't come up with the money they needed, then they'd sell the church and collect the money. Um, and that was, well, that was a very difficult time for us. Difficult but necessary for St George. You know, we lost the school, we, lots of other things we've lost. And, and if we've lost the church, then there's nothing left to hold us together. St James could raise the cash, but to end the threat of closure, the congregation bought out the diocese and established an independent community church. It gives the opportunity for it to continue as it always has. Um, as we sort of mentioned earlier, it's been going for nearly 150 years and so hopefully it can go for another 150 more. This story is emblematic of the strain and splintering within organised religion. Census data shows that the number of people who identify as Anglican is in freefall. Tasmania is traditionally an Anglican stronghold, but the community here has shrunk from 130 to 80,000 in the past decade, and only 4,500 attend church in a given month. The bishop isn't alarmed. He says church attendance is slowly growing as they rebuild trust in the wake of scandal. Institutional church is on the nose for many people, but Jesus is not on the nose. He's still very attractive. The church is also exploring what else makes religion attractive. Part of the growth of the Pentecostal church is that uh, it is a more accessible way of encountering the, the Christian faith that uh, is culturally understandable. So we're, uh, our churches are trying to do that. They hope devotees can keep their faith without losing their religion. Lachlan Bennett, ABC News, North Down.